If you tell the dead to rise, then they will rise. Stop wasting the power. Until your reason is accomplished, the power has not been given to any devil to kill you. He whom the Son has set free is whatever God gives you is sufficient. Come on, for your assignment in life. Let's just pray. Father, we give you praise for another beautiful service, for a time of fellowshiping with one another and with your spirit. We thank you for those far you have brought us. Even as we get into your word today, Father, expand the word in the hearts of your people. Let us experience the spirit and the life of the word. Let bodies be healed today. In the name of Jesus, let souls be saved. In the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance of Mount Zion and let there be joy in the hearts of your people. Above all, take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I want to take my scripture from Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, the second letter of Paul to the Corinthian church in chapter 12, verse 9. And it reads, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. You know, the interesting thing about this is that this is an exact quote, Jesus speaking to Paul. The rest of the verse says, Therefore, most gladly, Paul was talking now, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What does that tell you? There's something I can do that will get the power of God constantly resting on me. What did he say? He said, I will boast in my infirmity. What does that translate to? I think I need to get us into the context to understand the fullness of what we're saying. To get into the context, by the way, if we take it from verse 7, it says, Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thought in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Then verse 8 says, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart me. Three times. And he, the Lord, said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I think the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that, hey, rather than a hopeless situation that I found myself, I can begin to rejoice in the fact that, hey, the strength of the Lord is with me. He's made perfect with me. So the same situation that God me scared, that God me thinking, Oh my goodness, I'm abandoned. It's the same situation that is now getting me realize that God's power is available to me. I mean, the best of his power, of his strength, of his ability is about to be revealed in me. It's a complete change of a mindset. And you know, a man becomes exactly what he's thinking. Are you getting my point? My situation has not changed, but my thinking has changed. Hear Jesus again. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And the moment your thoughts change, your direction will change. Now, Paul had had revelations upon revelations. As a matter of fact, look at the first few verses of chapter 12. Paul said from verse 1, It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Say, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know. Whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows such one was corrupt to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and had inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth, but I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hear from me. Then we come to verse 7. 
unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Then concerning these things, I prayed it three times. That it might depart from me. Then Jesus answered me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. The context is clear. There was trouble in the life of Paul. It was a physical thing. He said, how do you know? He said, a thorn was given to me to buffet me in my flesh. My flesh. It was physical. Now, some say it was illness. I don't know. But the literal meaning of buffet means beating me. I mean, torturing me. Tormenting me. Something I didn't want. Something I wanted out of the way. That's why he said, concerning this thing, I saw the Lord three times. But the answer I got is this. My grace is sufficient for you. What would I have expected, like Paul did expect, that, okay, now that you have talked to me, let it go. But that wasn't the answer I got. Then this brings me to the mystery of seemingly unanswered prayers. To Paul, unlike it will be the case with any one of us going through something today, to see God is not answering our prayers. Why? Because we're not getting the result like we expect to get it, like our definition of the result. But hear what he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Can I tell someone here today? The Spirit of God will have me tell you his grace is sufficient for you. Then he went on to say, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That your weakness affords me the opportunity to display my strength. You trust me so much, and now it looks like you're drowning? Then watch me step up. Watch me step in. Don't you ever forget that your life is a life of collaboration with the Spirit of God. And the troubles come and we're bewildered. And we make to think that we're alone, but you are never alone. And that lesson you quickly learn from this is this. Hey, looks like this trouble is going to truncate your life. It will not truncate your life. You will not die. You will live and you will declare the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Number three, this problem may make you think that fine, I may not die, but I may end up a failure. No, it's not strong enough to thwart your assignment in life. That's why he said, my grace is sufficient for you. You will finish perfectly. That's my fourth point. You will finish well. You will finish well. You will finish in flying colors. In the name of Jesus, you will finish and people will stand in awe of what you have achieved. Not knowing fully well that it's God behind you, but you will never forget that. So Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, let's take it the other way. Suppose God or Jesus at this point had caused the thorn in the flesh to go then chances are, from what you've read, that he will then begin to think more highly of himself. And of course we all know that for anyone to fall is first pride. And it's natural for all of us when we've achieved something to make a boast in our achievement. It's okay, but please let your boast include the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So suppose it had been removed then chances are he would have failed. He would have failed to finish. So the answer is this. Did God answer his prayers? Yes. In the best way that God will answer it. In the way that it will best suit his purpose in life. He had this in Paul at the end of his life. He was writing a letter to Timothy. He said, I've run a good race. I've fought a good fight. i finished my course. He said, now that remained for me. You will get your crown in Jesus' name. Whatever you are going through is not enough to stop you. 
So can I advise you? Genuinely, don't give up. You are not built to give up. So rather than removing it, I'm strengthening you to become infallible to the lies and the strength of the devil. I'm positioning you to be able to withstand the lies of the devil. And that brings me to an expansion of grace. Many think that grace is just saving you from trouble. For example, sin. Grace is God's leniency from sin. You're right. Because what grace actually means is that rather than bearing the brunt of my stupidity and my follies and my failure in life, Jesus Christ stepped in to pay the price. So that's why it's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as long as I identify and accept the sacrifices given to me, then I come in free through him, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But it doesn't just stop there. It's not just saving you from the repercussion of sin. It empowers you to be able to overpower sin. So in other words, grace does not just save me from sin, it empowers me. Part of the salvation is it empowers me to be able to withstand sin. I'm no more a slave to sin. I can't be kicked around by Satan to do whatever he wants anymore. So full understanding, grace will deliver and empower. Glory be to God in the highest. And that's what we see in this situation. Delivering you from the fear of failure. Delivering you from the fear of death and assuring you that you will finish well. That's why it says my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Now, look at this in the life of Paul. Why would God use the phrases he used? Because he was talking to someone that had an understanding of grace. He said, really? If you looked at all his letters, Apostle Paul, his greeting starts with grace. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. See how he closed the letter. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 23. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So you can see that he never did anything without the consciousness of the grace of God. But it's easy to understand. You see how? He knew who he was before. Before he encountered Jesus on the way to Damascus. And the kind of grace, I mean, I mean, from one moment, Jesus was saying, why are you kicking against me? Why are you, why are you persecuting me? It's difficult for anyone to kick against the gods. The next moment we're saying, you know what? I'm going to show you how much you're going to serve the, me in the kingdom and how much you're going to suffer for this kingdom. One moment. The next moment. That's grace. So he fell down. A rebel. An enemy of the gospel. He got up. <laughs> an ambassador of the gospel ready to die for it. That's grace. Again, you find the same thing in this book of 2 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul would not start anything or do anything without the consciousness of the grace of God. Look at the way he closed the second book. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You know, in the translation, put it this way. Say, now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have experienced, enable you to discern and appropriate the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit. So, consciousness of the grace of God will always put you at the center of His love, abiding in the love of God will always put you in the consciousness of the fellowship of the Spirit. Meaning, you will never lack help. You will never feel destitute. And that explains, really, the meaning of grace. Which glibly we believe as the favor, undeserved favor, unmerited favor, which is true. But there's another trust to this. It's the unmerited favor of God, and yet the empowerment of the Spirit of God from above. Grace 
is power. Grace is strength. You know, before I came in today, I was talking to a sister on the phone. I just felt in my spirit that there was a need to call one or two people, and she was one of them. I felt that they might be going through some stuff. So I got one of our lady pastors to call her. She said the moment the call came, she started crying. She said she wept like a baby and she was almost embarrassing the pastor. So what we didn't know was that the day before, the night before, she had wept throughout the night, thinking that nobody loves her, that even God does not care anymore. So at that point, the moment she woke up in the morning and she just was crying on, I mean, non-stop. She's, and she got to that place where she made that statement that I don't think God really cares anymore. She said, half rang. First, it was a friend from school, a Christian. I heard her cry. Told her, I'm coming over. Then, while they were counseling, half rang again. Her cousin, another Christian. She said, oh, I'm coming over. So the two of them were counseling with her. It was during the casting session that this call came. I said, excuse me, this is food. Then she picked it. I said, Pastor Taiwo and Numpty will have me check on you. She said, she just started crying. I said, what? Why? Because she thought that God didn't care anymore. And that's why a lot of times when we're praying and we seem like we're not getting the answers. No, no, no. We're getting the answers. It's probably not in the way and manner that we expected at that time. She just made that statement, God, no, no, I'll prove it to you that I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So we talked for a while. And she said to me, she said, Pastor, now I see how people begin to think suicidal. I said, what? He said, yes. He said, but the moment I ventured that way, God came in. I said, that's the grace of God. Now that's what Paul was saying. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And that's what he was telling Paul. He said, no, 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 no. Don't think you are the only one. I'm there with you. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is adequate enough. My grace is all you need. You get you to the end. You're not well. This brings me to the way Jack Hayford explained it. He says, God's grace is his enablement or empowerment to achieve his plan, endure hardship, or access him. You will always Grace always provides access to him. Gives you an enduring spirit to weather anything through. Grace puts you in such a position that the devil will come begin to get scared of you. What really comes to mind is after the king and all the troops of Israel were running, after they have been running from Goliath, suddenly one small boy came that would not be deterred. The more Goliath, the more he kept coming. That's what grace does. The more the devil will boast at you, the more he will come at you, the more you are coming. Why? Because you know that his grace is sufficient. In this clash, I won't be the one to go down. It's you, devil. Is the clash real? Oh, yes, it's real. Is it scary? Oh, yes, it's scary. Do people run? Oh, yes, they run. Why aren't you running? His grace is sufficient for me. You will finish well in the name of Jesus. You know how somebody has put it? it? says, the worst days are not so bad that you are beyond the grace. And your best days are never so good that you are beyond this need of grace. Grace is the sum totality of our lives. Grace saved us from the total destruction that we found ourselves in the Garden of Eden. So grace is the reason we are where we are. Remember, that's why Paul will say, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Did you hear that? So if grace has brought me this far, grace will see me to the end. So I will hear again to say to somebody, His grace is sufficient for you. This too will pass in Jesus' name. Many have passed in your life. This one will pass. God will still take the glory. You will stand at the finishing end and look back and say, how did you do it? The world will think you are the hero. You will never fail to know that it is Jesus Christ and I. Isn't God faithful? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amazing. So this reminds me of a story. 
which I read somewhere, I think from a sermon somewhere. They said, these two couples, are, I mean, had met in church. Then after service, one invited the other for lunch in their home, which they obliged. They had a good meal, a good time, beautiful home, beautiful architecture, beautiful furniture, beautiful uh, environment, lovely gardens. Then after the meal, they were taken around and shown the estates. And come on, they appreciated what God has done for this couple. Then the visitor said, my goodness, I can see what God has done for you. You and God are a wonderful team. Then the host answered, said, yeah, you're right. But you need to have seen it when God owned it alone. He lacked knowledge. He forgot that you are who you are by the grace of God. And that was Paul's understanding. And that was Jesus' understanding of Paul's understanding of grace. That's why I could tell him in this difficult situation, my grace is sufficient for you. And Paul understood. And his grace indeed was sufficient for him. Like I said, he said to Timothy, I fought a good fight. He finished it. I ran a good race. I finished my course. You will finish well in Jesus' name. But always remember, don't give up. Don't ever, ever give up. And the secret, don't you ever get to pity yourself. Never. You are not to be pitied. You are created to be celebrated. God loves you. God brags on you. Don't believe the lie of the devil. That's all he wants you to see. His main strategy is divide and rule. Barricade you and make you feel alone and pump lies into you. You are more beautiful than you think you are. The Bible is clear. You are smarter than the devil is telling you you are. You are much more able than what the devil is saying. You are built with hope on the inside. That's why God is able to do exceedingly above even your thinking or your asking. Your future is better, brighter, much more beautiful. His grace is sufficient for you. I know by now you have a testimony. Will you write me and share your testimony with me? I will read it on this program. If you don't want me to mention your name, I will not. If you want to, I will. But I still, can you record your testimony? I will play it on this program and let the world know that our God reigns. And indeed, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is always sufficient for us. I'm glad you are here with me today. Now, you will agree with me that except you have a relationship with Him, you cannot really appropriate this grace that we are talking about like you should. In which case, I know you must have been making up your mind to make a decision for Jesus. If that's your decision, will you want to pray with me? Or let me lead you in a prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for reaching out to me in your love, for extending your grace to me. Now I've come to discern and realize it. And I need it. I want it. So cleanse me from my sins. Empower me with your spirit. Henceforth, use me for your glory. In your most precious name, I have prayed. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father, based on his confession, on her confession of faith, I present you, this your son or daughter to you. Father, do what you do to everyone that decides this way. Strengthen them from inside. Give them rapid understanding of your word. Fill them with your spirit. And for the rest of their lives, use them for your glory. We give you all the praises in Jesus' name. If you are seeking your body, the Bible says by his stripes you were healed. That is, he did it 2,000 years ago. But we can appropriate it and bring it to manifestation today. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
in the lives of all my hearers. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity and I release your miracle working power because by Jesus' stripes we are healed. So I say be healed in the name of Jesus. I mean be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for answers to prayers in Jesus' name. Again, write me to share your testimonies. Now I pronounce the peace of God over your life. I pronounce the joy of the Lord over your life and your home in the name of Jesus. I say, let the works of your hand prosper in everything you do. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ always be sufficient for you. It will always be. But may you always be conscious of the fact that His grace is sufficient for you. Until next time on this program, remember, His grace is sufficient for you. God bless you. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, exactly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, be yours and be with you, now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over you. Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you and it quickens your mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. God bless you.